She's accused of silencing her critics. Her main rival is in jail. Now, Sheikh Hasina's decade in power is being put to the test. Will Bangladeshis vote for her to stay as prime minister? And why does this election matter? This is Inside Story. Hello and welcome to the program. I'm Rochelle Carey, the daughter of democracy to her supporters and authoritarian to her critics. Bangladesh's Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina has been in and out of power for decades, and now she's likely to win a mandate for a record third straight term. Millions of Bangladeshis have cast their votes in what's being seen as a referendum on Hasina's ruling Awami Party. The elections have been marred by violence, accusations of a crackdown on opposition voices, and complaints of vote rigging. Asina's longtime rival is the former prime minister, Khalida Zia, but she's been in jail since February on corruption charges and is barred from even taking part. Charles Stratford is, has the latest now from the capital, Dhaka. As polls closed in this, the 11th election in this country's history since its independence in 1971, yet more allegations, predominantly by the opposition, of voter intimidation and potentially vote rigging. Certainly the Election Commission says it's going to be investigating these claims. At the polling station that we visited, things were calm, but interestingly we spoke to a member, a member of, a, of an opposition polling station team who said that they had their ID papers and their election papers confiscated. They then said that they were threatened and forced to leave the premises by what they described as supporters of the ruling party. Now, um, each party is supposed to have representatives at these polling stations. They monitor the voting process and vitally have to be present for the counting of the votes. So certainly these allegations are consistent with uh, what it seems the Election Commission could be investigating. Um, it's also important to say that at this particular polling station, there seem to be very few members of or supporters of, of the opposition casting their ballots. Um, one man who came up to us quietly and was keen to report to us that he said that he'd arrived at the polling station to find out that his ballot had already been cast. Now, the government has said that the kind of figures that the opposition have been putting out in the build-up to this election, the opposition saying that more than 10,600 of its supporters and some of its candidates have uh, been arrested, detained in the build-up to the election. The ruling party saying that these figures are fabricated um, uh, and there's, a, there's been a lot of exaggeration on the level of violence that has been committed by their supporters. And they're keen to point out that they have also been the victim of violence. At least six supporters of the ruling party have been killed in the run-up to this election. The government also, it must be pointed out, despite their human rights record, the international community or mem members of the international community and the World Bank have been very complimentary with respect to the economic policies of Bangladesh in recent years. At least 6% economic annual growth um, in recent years. They've also been very complimentary to the government about the way that it's handled what was described last year as the largest refugee crisis in the world, around 700,000 Rohingya refugees fleeing a crackdown in Myanmar that are now residing in camps in Bangladesh. But as I say, with these increasing allegations now of voter fraud during this poll, um, it's going to be very interesting to see whether either side accept any result after this election. Charles Stratford in Dhaka for Inside Story. Let's take a closer look at the woman who's led Bangladesh for nearly a decade. Sheikh Hasina is the daughter of Bangladesh's founder who led the country to its independence from Pakistan. She was elected to the leadership of the ruling Awami League in 1981 and began her first stint as prime minister in 1996. She is now the country's longest serving. In 2007, Hasina was jailed on charges of corruption alleged to have taken place while she was in office. She returned to power in 2009 and has been credited with overseeing 10 years of economic growth, but criticized for cracking down on the opposition. She's also been praised for welcoming Rohingya refugees fleeing a military crackdown in Myanmar. 
Let's bring in the panel now. Joining us from London, Sultan Ahmoud Sharif, president of the Awami League in the UK, and Dhaka Shahab Inam Khan, a professor of international relations at Jahangir Nagar University. And also in London, Sharu Lata Hogg, associate fellow of the Asia Pacific program at Chatham House. Uh, appreciate all of you uh, for joining me right now. So, um, Sultan, I want to start with you. Is the atmosphere right for a free and fair election as you see it? It is fully, uh, very much an atmosphere where people were able to come and cast their vote. I have been getting information from people who were standing in the queue all over the country and giving information as to how simple, easy, and comfortable it was for them to go and give their vote. And I'm fully satisfied that it was done as per the promise of the Election Commission, the law enforcing authorities, the government of the day, and other, so, other people who are uh, conducting this election, including the civil servants and the helping uh, police forces. Shahaba, I'd be interested in your thoughts as well. Do you think that there's the, the proper atmosphere to, to foster a free and fair election? Uh, well, uh, it depends how we see it, but uh, generally I would say that uh, it was relatively much peaceful than what we earlier uh, anticipated. Uh, perhaps uh, there are allegations uh, that in some uh, voting or some polling stations uh, irregularities. Perhaps uh, there is also uh, uh, wide uh, uh, media reporting that almost like uh, uh, more than 18 uh, people uh, died uh, during the day of election, uh, which gives you a little bit of uneasy picture where you see that the election has been marked with violence and uh, irregularities. And the election commission has rightfully mentioned that they will definitely look into it and conduct appropriate uh, inquiry uh, into all these allegations which has been lodged by different political parties. So therefore, in a general sense, uh, the atmosphere was much more better than what we anticipated, but perhaps the violence really questions uh, a certain integrity of the entire process. Okay. Uh, Sharu, your thoughts? Well, I, I think, you know, rather than concentrate only on what happened in ele on election day, which in, in any case, we don't have a very clear picture because uh, media hasn't had full and free access uh, to the election coverage. We've had very little independent oversight and monitoring of the elections. Let's step back a little bit and see how the state machinery has been manipulated in Bangladesh uh, for a period of time during the campaigning, the way the election election commission has been manipulated, the way the police has been deployed. So instruments of the state have been used in the ruling party's favor. In addition, I think we have to step step back and really look at uh, the onslaught on the opposition, which has been taking place for the last two years almost. You know, we've had 61% of the opposition candidates who've had some form of uh, criminal um, cases uh, filed against them. So the, a, a virtual decimation of those in the opposition has taken place, uh, which, in my view, would not constitute uh, a free and fair election. Um, and we actually are, are absolutely going to, going to drill down on that when you talk about the opposition. But I actually want to bring up something that, um, that Sultan and Shahab both referenced was the election commission. The chief election commissioner actually said that um, he wanted law enforcement agencies to act with an iron fist to check violence, an iron fist. Does that language concern you, Sultan? No, it doesn't concern me because for the entire pre-election years, if you look at the uh, record of the opposition, they, they are the people who were born out of the murder of the founding father, father of the country, Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, and his family members in gruesome way at his own residence, and then took over power uh, in the country. 
and subsequently ruled the country without law, without any, any law, without any system, and without any election. The, these people in the last election did not participate in the election. In okay, but, of but, that, but Sultan, I'm talking. Sultan, I'm, Sultan, I'm talking about right now, though. Right now, that that. As a matter of fact, there's one. Right, just yeah, a moment. Let right me. There's, now, just a moment, though. There's one. A, a political analyst, um, Afsan Chaudhry, described it this way. He says that political parties don't see each other as political rivals. They look upon others as enemies. I mean, even the language that you're using now seems to be extremely harsh. Well, it is Absa Mr. Absan's view. My view is that there are elements in all political parties all over the world who would try to agitate their own party men and other party people, and they are not the leaders. If you look at what Sheikh Hasina has been telling over the years, continually, that the election will be free and fair, that it will not be interfered with by any organization. It will be unfair if somebody is committing crime and the police does not stop or law enforcement other authorities do not stop them. Of the 18 murders in last two days, 16 people were Aumi League activists, 16 of them. A answer police helper who D was murdered D uh, mercilessly Sultan, in, a, Sultan, in a gruesome way. Sultan, as Shahru made a very good point earlier, we're still trying to gather a lot of the facts uh, of the day and of actually what has happened there. Okay. So I want to let me bring okay. in, let me, Shahab, okay. I want you to respond to what, I, I saw you reacting to what I was saying that this political analyst said, that the rhetoric is so charged and people talk about each other as enemies instead of political rivals. Do you agree with that? Uh, yes, to a great extent. The, the point is uh, uh, just a little bit of uh, the political history. I mean, if you take Bangladesh's political history since 1991, uh, two major political parties have always had a, a divergent view on political philosophy, political ideology. And perhaps that has escalated uh, into violence many, many times. Now, what happened in 2008 onward is we had a credible election in 2008 where the current regime came into power. But 2014 was a fractured election, perhaps. But again, 2018 was an election where all the political parties agreed to come and participate. So I should give a credit to the political parties to really show some sort of common ground that they really need to take the democratic institutions forward. So therefore, they were in the election. But perhaps, yes, there are allegations and there are visual allegations. And perhaps we have seen in the media that there were widespread concerns regarding the integrity of certain institutions. And rightfully, if you take the election commissioner's statements this morning, two of them were essentially saying that they didn't see any kind of polling agent coming from the other parties uh, taking part in the uh, electoral process. So perhaps these are the allegations which election commission itself has endorsed. So therefore, I think these things should be dealt with pretty fast. And perhaps when you discussed about the role of the police or law enforcement agencies, well, uh, the historic uh, reason is police would always comply with the regime of the day. So there's no deviation to that, whether okay. it is BNP in power or Awami League is in power. So, so, so henceforth, uh, uh, the colloquial that you mentioned, Iron Steve or others, is perhaps a regular rhetoric that Bangladeshis are habituated with. Uh, Sharu, you, you mentioned um, the, the state, the status, rather, of the opposition, and I think that's important to discuss why, um, what has been done to, to weaken the opposition. I mean, it's obvious that the main opposition leader is in jail, but what are the other types of systemic things that have been done, so much so that they did not even participate in 2014? Uh, well, I think you have to see it. I think a very good point was made earlier about the fault lies on all sides. All political parties across the board have behaved in an irregular manner 
through the years. There have been violations committed by all sides. Uh, in this particular context, I would say there was such disillusionment with the Awami League's ability to hold a free and fair election in 2014 that the opposition decided to abstain and, and stay out of the election. So there was an illegit the, the election in 2014, one can argue, lost its legitimacy. How, what about the 2018 elections? Is it a legitimate election? Certainly the fact that parties have come together, as was just pointed out, makes it a legitimate election. But the means that were used to weaken and fracture the opposition and the widespread, not just arrests, but also cases, the, the, the direct attacks, the onslaught on, on those who spoke out, including the media. And we've had the very emblematic case of Shahidul Alam, um, uh, who was put under uh, 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 arrest, and despite uh, an international furore about it. Uh, this sort of complete authoritarian clampdown on dissent is something I would say was rather unprecedented. The BNP has had its its share of, um, you know, um, suppressing dissent and, and having showing streaks of authoritarianism in the past when it was in uh, in the in the chair. Uh, however, I think with the Awami League, it took uh, a very unprecedented scale. You know, we've seen um, the killings of opposition uh, members. We've seen uh, as I was saying, you know, the attacks in terms of criminal cases being launched, the absolute uh, emasculation of the opposition, I think, is, has been quite complete under the Awami League. Sultan, um, obviously you're, you're with the uh, Awami League in the UK. I'm sure yeah, you'd like I... to respond to that. Of course, respond to, to all these things. Uh, Asanullah Master, a level leader and a, a member of parliament, was murdered in front of the school where he was a, basically originally a teacher, school teacher, uh, in broad daylight by BNP thugs, uh, who have been uh, during later time arrested and but uh, Sultan, taken into Sultan, account. for just a moment, Sultan, just a uh, moment, just to, just one Kibriya, second. I'll, I'll let you Kibriya, finish. Kibriya, so Bangladesh, once... foreign. Hey, one second, one second. Sharu no, said no, Sharu said that, that both sides have been guilty of a lot of a lot of things. She she did say that. No, I'm no, just no I, no. I disagree I disagree with you because there is no two sides. One side has done so much criminal acts. I started with the killing of the founding father of Bangladesh. The national leaders who fought who were the leaders of our liberation war. They were murdered inside the jail in a gruesome way. Sultan, I'm, I'm, I, I, I Sultan, am one are you of those saying, people are you saying that the fought that liberation war. Are you saying that the Awami and League is not? we were... Go ahead. Go ahead. Awami League is, is an organization which tried to establish democracy in the country. And the last effort before this election was that to ask, request everybody to come and join in an election. 29 political parties have participated in this election. A political party which may not have 42,000 uh, in 42,000 uh, centers, enough people to give their representative. That could not be put on Aum League, as Aum League cannot be blamed for that. A political party which for 12 years did not do any politics. And Sh before okay. that, All right. okay. Hold on. Okay. rampantly Sultan. stole public property. Okay, Sultan, just a moment. Obviously Sultan. will be taken into ta task. Sultan, I yes. want to bring Shahab into this conversation as, a, as an outside observer, a professor, uh, yeah. a professor yeah. of international relations. Sharu has yes. tried to say okay. that, that both sides have, have done improper things. Um, Sultan obviously is pushing back on the idea that Awami did and giving us a lot of history. And I'm not saying that history doesn't matter. History and context actually do matter. But do you think that that for, for a lot of voters or at least party leaders, they're so entrenched in history that they're not looking forward? No, I mean, I think uh, uh, the people are looking forward. I mean, this is mm -hmm. one of the prime feature of the contemporary politics in Bangladesh. You have rightly mentioned, and my other speaker uh, from London...
spoken about it, that yes, there, uh, the institutions are pretty much fractured to a large extent, but again, this is the legacy we have inherited for a long, long time, historically. But again, now what determines people at the moment? There are three, four major issues. One is whether the public safety is delivered, whether the economy is actually trickling down to the bottom, uh, or perhaps uh, what kind of governance are we going to establish in this country. So perhaps, yes, last 10 years we had hiccups, and there are plenty of uh, uh, reports which shows that, yes, uh, the development was uneven. But at the end of the day, what has happened today, as, as uh, my friend from Awami League has also said, that yes, it was also on the part of the other political parties to come up with political maturity. And I'm certainly uh, not blaming anybody here, but perhaps a, a, a little bit of uh, more political maturity on the both sides, the regime and the opposition, uh, was expected. Uh, that's the reason why we are now seeing 18 death, which is not at all acceptable, whoever it is. Whether the guys are from uh, the ruling party or the opposition doesn't matter. What matters is the lives are lost. So which means the institutions does have some sort of uh, weaknesses which mm -hmm. will require immediate attention and perhaps amendment. And uh, the other from London has rightly mentioned that, yes, there were uh, the issues of political vacuum, there was an issue of uneven law enforcement, but perhaps this gives another mandate to the current regime or the regime that will come into power soon to really fix it. Because uh, unless you fix it, perhaps another five years we don't, uh, people will not really, will be willing to see uh, much more hiccups. Okay. So, so at the end of the day, everything lies within the hands of the political okay, parties, Shal, how wanna, they want to do it. I want to get in one more question, um, Sharu, before we run out of time. The, the massive Rohingya exodus, um, everyone is being, so many people are being received in Bangladesh. Has that been a campaign issue or a discussion at all? Well, certainly there has been some attempt, uh, you know, by uh, certain uh, certain parties, certain interests within Bangladesh uh, to create fear about the Rohingya exodus. Certainly the issue about uh, the Rohingyas um, uh, radicalization, radicalizing Bangladesh and, and, and spreading uh, Islamic, uh, hardline uh, Islamic militancy in that part of Bangladesh has been, that, that view has been perpetrated, uh, per perpetuated by, by certain groups, um, including the Hafazat, which is linked with the Awami League. Uh, but I'd like to make a quick point here, and which is about, you know, these elections. The Awami League has done well. It, it, it's been classified as authoritarian development, or whatever that may be. The economy is showing a strong growth of 7%. Um, Employment is, is high and good. Uh, people are reaping the benefits of this economic growth. Uh, the access to education has certainly improved. Um, so there have been good things that have happened. And, and the Awami League would have possibly, as per the recent polls, uh, would have possibly won this election without the, the bending the rule of law. It didn't need it. So ironically, the Awami League was in a good position, even internationally, welcoming the Rohingyas has been a very good move and it has been generally with with all the hiccups involved has been generally um, you know accepted and 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 the awami league uh, deserves credit for that as the government in power so i i suppose what i'm trying to say is that this election could have gone seamlessly and in awami league's favor it didn't need to bend the rule of law and that will be the final word. I think that's a good place to wrap it up. Um, thank you to all of my guests. I appreciate your time uh, very much. Sultan Mahmoud Sharif, uh, Shahab Inam Khan, and Sharu Lata Hogg. Thank you all very much. And thank you for watching. You can see the program again anytime. Go to our website, aljazeera.com. For further discussion, go to our Facebook page. That's facebook.com forward slash AJ Inside Story. And you can also join the conversation on Twitter. Our handle is at AJ Inside Story. From me, Rochelle Carey, and the entire team. Bye for now.